Hey guys, welcome back to the business of art. I'm here with Jason Castle, who is a photographer, a videographer, a producer. You should definitely check out his YouTube channel down in the description. He makes these hilarious short videos. He's definitely got quite the sense of humor. And actually, if you guys find on uh, Mixed Media Girl the how to make a viral video, you'll see this guy. I recruited him I forgot for about that, that because he's so <laughs> funny. Check that out too. I'll put it in the description. Um, but basically, I thought it would be great to corner him to see what tips he could give us for those of you who have to phot photograph your art indoors at nighttime and you don't have a lot of resources. So first of all is um, would white light or like soft light be better? Uh, that's a good question. I think it depends on what you're trying to do. So if you're taking a picture, if you're... Uh, Let's say the average yeah, okay. painting light, we're going to photograph this. Perfect. So soft light is always better. Okay. Soft light is fantastic. If you go too non-soft and it's too harsh, it's too bright directly on it, you're going to get a lot of reflections, you're going to get a lot of glare, and you want to avoid that. So the softest light possible. Um, if you have like a work light, a lot of times I do like s super simple little non-professional videos where it's a regular light bulb and it's like a thing that you can get from uh, Home Depot or something with a clamp. I take a sheet, a pillowcase, a plastic bag, like a grocery bag, kind of wrap it around the bulb. Be very careful because it gets hot. Yeah. But if you do something like that, probably avoid doing that with the plastic. <laughs> a sheet or a pillowcase or something. What you're what you're trying to do is diffuse the light if you have a harsh light problem. If you don't have a harsh light problem and the bulb is super soft, then you're good. You don't have to do that. Okay. Um, yeah. And then would you recommend having the light directly pointed at your object, pointed up, off to the side? Well, you also... Like, let's uh, say you're using like a lamp or something. Yeah. If you're doing that, you also want to avoid your own shadow of yourself or the camera getting on uh, the picture. Good point. So if you have the light directly behind you and the picture is here, obviously there's going to be this perfect little silhouette of your head on the picture. So you don't want that. So ideally what you want is the light to be, let's say this is the picture. You want the light to be either to the side or up above if you can. Ideally, you have multiple lights. If, yeah. if you can do this where you have like two lights, one is one. Uh, there's a shadow that's being cast and the other one's eliminating the shadow, Yeah. that's ideal. Oh, that's smart. And then smart. you could be in the center of it. So if, uh, if you're here, you'd be the example. So you hold this okay. like that. So what you could set up, if this is possible, you could use basic lamps. One light here, so your light source is pointing from the side. The other one's pointing from the other side. That way, any shadow that's cast by either one is eliminated by the opposite light. And then you could be directly in the center. No reflection because the bulb's not behind you. And you get the picture just right. Awesome. Okay. Well, one more question, I yeah. think, is uh, sometimes people have trouble centering or squaring yeah. their object. Do you have any tips for that? Like, um, I don't know, maybe comparing it to something else or like to, to getting it uh, square in the frame? Yeah. Okay. So... Um, one super easy thing I would start with if you're using a tripod, most of them have like a little bubble level on the tripod. Those things are super, super helpful. So if you have that, you have your picture set up wherever it's set up, you use your tripod, you look at the little bubble and that could be the first thing you do is yeah. just make sure that's set up. And most people I think are not using a tripod. They're so probably if, just okay. with their phone. <laughs> so if you're just using your phone and you don't have a tripod or anything like that and you're trying to do it. Um, try to, if you're able to set the artwork on something flat, so like, for example, I was taking pictures of actually your work a long time ago, and I, I just set it on top of a bookshelf. And I knew that as long as the bookshelf is flat, which it probably is, and the foundation of my building is as flat as possible, then that's as flat as I'm going to be uh, with the picture. So I try to do maybe, um, hold the camera and like set it down on top of it at first, you know, just so your faint, your hand yeah. feels level. And then you kind of like pull away and just. That's smart. Kind yeah, of a so default utilize, setting. So utilize a table or yeah. another piece of furniture, something flat to stabilize your hand. That's exactly. a really good idea. Okay, good. Uh, and then I actually wanted to give one more tip, which is on uh, photographing something very reflective, such as resin. <laughs> so hard. It's so hard to do. Super hard. Um, so, what I recommend on that. And I'm going to have a video coming up where I'm going to demonstrate as many of these things as possible. But I just thought while I had him here, I would just, you know, get something to you guys right away. But I recommend um, having someone actually stand behind you with a sheet. Totally. To block off any uh, harsh or reflective light and give you just an even lighting 
You don't ever want to have like a light bulb directly pointing on it because you'll just get a white circle on your picture and you'll never get it or a line or whatever, you know. So that's a, a tip is have someone stand behind you with a big piece of cloth and block out any direct light on your super reflective piece. As an example, let's show them physically. So this is the picture. So I'm trying to take a picture of the artwork that's over there. Yeah. She's so going to hold I'm a sheet I'm standing here me. with a big sheet. It's over here. So I'm like this. And I'm shooting you, and then she, see she's being as big as possible, and she's blocking all the external Maybe light. Maybe recruit a taller person. Yeah, if you have a taller person. Or someone with a chair. <laughs> <laughs> that does it. That, that really yeah, that helps. Because everything else is blocked out. Uh, I was going to go back for a second with yeah. the um, making sure everything is flat. A lot of times, if you're filming with an iPhone or Galaxy or something like that, they do have an option in the settings of the camera for grid lines. Ooh, yeah. That's really, really helpful. That is a really good idea. So look in your phone settings on the camera for your grid yeah. lines and then just square it in those grid lines. Yeah, that's, really that's exactly what it's for. So there's two things you do with the grid lines. One of them is to show you in which section the camera or in which section what your you're shooting is going to be. Yeah, you'll know it's, it's directly in the center of the camera to the far left, far right. The other thing is to show you if it's crooked or if it's not crooked. Yeah. So if the line is kind of cutting like this, you know, you mm -hmm. just physically just match that up. Yeah, that's that's a really, really good tip. Okay, Relax. awesome. So like I said, I'll have a video coming up as quick as possible for actual demonstrations of these points. But I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any other questions regarding this in the comments so that I can cover it in the next video on this subject. And otherwise, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.